What's up YouTube? My name is Dr. Ali Hader. I'm an interventional cardiologist. Thank you for checking back into the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a nifty little device that I use in my practice that you may be thinking about purchasing or just trying to learn a little bit more about, and that is the Butterfly IQ handheld portable ultrasound. And it basically is a handheld ultrasound that plugs right into your iPhone and allows you to do a variety of ultrasound focus examinations at the bedside. Now, I've been using this device for about a year now, and as you can see, this is a brand new box over here that is replacing my old one. My old one encountered some technical issues, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So I'm gonna go over some of the pros and the cons of the device, and we'll talk a little bit about how I use it in my practice and my thoughts. So we're gonna do a little bit of an unboxing since I got a brand new box over here and see what's inside, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the device, the functionality, and how I use it as a cardiologist. So let's get to it. So here's our device right here. As you can see, although it is larger than the probe of your standard ultrasound machines, given the fact that all of the electronics and technology is right inside here, it's actually quite small. The ergonomical design is quite nice. No matter how you're gonna hold it, whether you're gonna hold it in various different angles with your hand, it's pretty comfortable and it's not easily gonna slip out of your hands no matter what kind of scan you're doing. Now, this has its own battery, okay? It is not powered by your iPhone, which is good, so it's not gonna drain your battery, it, but it also means that you gotta be cognition of the fact that the battery can run out. Right here on the front, this button sort of gives you the battery life, depending on how many of those lights are on. It does have its wireless charger, and I do recommend that you charge this often. Although the battery life is quite good, and you can usually use it a couple of days without charging it, all it takes is that one time you really need it, and the battery dies on you, and then you're in a pickle. Now, a couple other notes on the design. The wiring is kind of standard wiring here, all right? It's not braided, and it's not really designed to undergo a lot of stress. Now, one important thing to note is right where the wiring sort of intersects with the device. This can become a problem, right? You don't want to put a lot of stress at this spot right over here because that can damage the cords and wiring inside and cause a connection problem. This is actually what happened to my old device, all right? And I think that's why this device stopped communicating with my iPhone. If you can look, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see already there's a lot of stress on that cord and there's a little cracking over there and that can happen quite easily, so you have to be careful there. So the company does recommend caution, and when you're wrapping this up, you wanna keep a little extra slack on this to make sure that it's not gonna get a lot of stress. Now, even with that, as careful as you are, it can still get damaged, especially if you're carrying this around in your white coat or it's in a bag. So I do recommend getting some sort of dedicated carrying device to increase the longevity and to make sure you're not gonna screw up any of the wiring on the inside. So that's an important tip to note. Okay, so you have seen the device. Let's take a look at how it functions with our iPhones. We're gonna unravel our cord. We're gonna grab our iPhones here and we're gonna plug it in. And let's have a look. Pretty quick, allow. It's gonna load up and boom. Right here, you're ready to go. We can choose presets, all right? So this again can be set to whatever sort of organ system you want. Of course, I'm using a lot of cardiac or cardiac deep, which is a little better resolution. You select it and pretty quickly, you're ready to go. If we wanna go then quickly to vascular, for example, we wanna look at carotid, again, boom, you're ready to go. So switching between presets is actually quite quick. Now other features, especially for cardiac, which is what I'm using this a lot for. Again, let's take a look at some of the other features. We have color Doppler, okay? which is quite useful when you're looking for valvular regurgitation, and we can do M mode as well. Now, what we don't have the ability to do right now is CW or PW, which is continue waves or 
continuous wave or pulse wave Doppler. So we're not able to assess, for example, velocities such as TR jets to look for pulmonary hypertension. We cannot really evaluate for aortic stenosis velocities, mitral stenosis jets to look for degree of valvular stenosis. So that is one limitation. However, the 2D and the color Doppler is enough to get you a lot of information that can be quite useful. So how do I use this most? Again, as a cardiologist, echocardiograms is where the money is for me, whether I'm in the office setting or I'm in the hospital setting. In the hospital setting, of course, if I'm seeing a new consult, it's really easy for me to get a quick assessment of the left ventricular function. I can get an assessment of the valves and look for a pericardial effusion, look at the IVC. So it's quite nice to get, uh, basically it becomes a complement to the physical exam. So I don't have to wait to get a formal echocardiogram to get a lot of this information. Also for patients that are crashing in the CCU, for example, somebody who we wanna do a quick assessment for a pericardial effusion, we wanna look for mechanical complications. I love it when I'm doing consults for patients with pulmonary embolisms, I can take a quick look at the RV without waiting for a formal echocardiogram. So in the hospital, it's definitely super useful. Now, I also like this in the office setting, particularly when I'm seeing a new consult. A new consultation for a patient with chest pain or shortness of breath, I can quickly get an assessment of their left ventricular size, function, look for an effusion, etc., really quickly, right at the bedside while I'm listening to their heart and lungs. Also, patients I'm following up after the hospitalization for heart failure or for a myocardial infarction, and I want to get a quick assessment of the left ventricle. Uh, maybe I'm following up a pericardial effusion. I can take a quick look at access sites after I've done a procedure in case somebody has symptoms to look for a pseudoaneurysm. When I'm seeing new consults, I can take a quick peek at the carotids. I can look at their axis and the radials and the femorals if I'm planning a procedure. And I can also screen for triple A's. And this will give me a quick assessment, again, kind of complementing the physical exam to figure out what I really need to spend money and get on this guy as far as formal testing goes. Now, when patients are overweight, obese, have bad lungs, etc. It can be really difficult to get good images. So the image quality again is not the same as your actual echo and ultrasound machines. So we'll be clear on that. So let's take a look at some of the image quality. I want to take a look at my radial artery and see how we see this on our iPhones. Okay, so we plug our device in here. We're going to go to the app. Boom, we're ready to go. We're going to go and select Vascular access, select. Gonna take off my watch. Gonna get a little ultrasound jelly here. Yeah, I just have it lying around at all times. So this is my radial artery. We're gonna have a look here and there you go. So right there is my radial. You can see the veins are rounded. We can kind of compress those veins to see the artery. There you can see kind of pulsating a little bit. And there we go. We can get this in a longitudinal access as well. Little color Doppler, we can again confirm that this is in fact arterial. Okay, so while we're here, let's have some fun. Let's have a look at my carotids. So here's my common carotid artery, okay? And here's a bifurcation, we can see that. This is my internal carotid. Again, it's hard when I'm standing up, but you can get a good sense. We can go to long axis or I can try to. So you can see the bifurcation here, there we go and I'm pretty free of plaque there. This can also be quite useful when you're looking for vascular access, taking a look at the size of the IJ or femoral vein or wherever you're trying to get venous access for, um, for a line perhaps in the ICU. So how about cardiac? Let's take a look at the quality of some of the cardiac scans because again, that's what I'm really using this most for. Okay, so the first case is a patient who came in with a late presentation, anterior wall myocardial infarction. We saw them in the emergency room. They were a little shocky, wanted to get a quick assessment of the left ventricle. So we threw on the device. Again, it was a smoker, sort of overweight person. So you can get a sense that the image quality, again, isn't great here, but you can see the LV is not moving very well. And there's a sense that the apex is also hypokinetic. The right ventricle there seems to be moving well. We're looking at the parasternal axis. You can see that the basal segments move well, but the mid to distal segments of the anteroseptum and the infralateral wall seem akinetic. And you can get a sense there's a small pericardial effusion posteriorly. Let's take a look at another case. The next case was a patient who came into the hospital with some shortness of breath and there was an enlarged cardiac silhouette on x-ray, so we were suspicious for pericardial effusion or tamponade. Also had low voltage on the EKG. So we threw on the butterfly IQ and the subcostal view clearly showed he had a large pericardial effusion. This 
kind of confirmed our diagnosis and pretty good image and we were able to get this pretty quickly. The right ventricle also seemed a little unhappy, so we threw an M mode across the right ventricle showing there was a little bit of diastolic collapse, which sort of proved our theory. We then also took a look at the IVC. You can see the IVC was a little dilated. So again, this gave us quick information to make a diagnosis of probable tamponade. Of course, combined with the clinical situation and that patient ended up getting a tap. So again, I wanted to show you these few cases to give you a sense of the kind of information we can get pretty quickly um, at the bedside, even if the image quality isn't perfect. So in summary, I think this is a very useful device that has utility for a broad range of physicians, certainly cardiologists, definitely emergency room physicians, and they can use this for all types of POCUS exams, critical care doctors in the ICU, and even hospitalists who are trained appropriately. Now, some of the pros and cons of the device, the pros, of course, is the portability, the speed, and the accessibility. Without question, you can pull this out of your pocket very quickly, whether it's at a bedside, a non-urgent situation, or it's a cold and very emergent situation and get pretty valuable information. They also have a HIPAA compliant cloud-based storage where you can keep all your images and scans and it actually links together with your office packs or your institution packs to save the images on your local server. So that's kind of nice. It also has a lot of different settings for different organ systems with different algorithms. So you have one single probe that you can assess the heart, the bladder, um, the vascular system, and it's pretty portable and pretty useful in that regard. They also constantly update the software to give you some more features and tools as time goes on, which is kind of nice because you'll consistently have some updated features and tools, even with the same device all through software. Now, some of the cons, the price tag is quite hefty, clocking in at about $2,000 for the device itself. So again, that's cost prohibitive for a lot of people. Additionally, there is a monthly service or a yearly fee you have to pay for their cloud-based storage and for some of the more advanced features. So although you don't have to purchase that monthly service, it does limit you in terms of saving images and on their cloud and utilizing some of the newer, fancier tools and software updates that they offer. Another con, one part of the design that again, I don't like is the risk of damaging the um, cord right at the interface of the device. Again, that's what happened to me. So that may become a problem for some people. So you have to really pay attention to that and take care of it. And frankly, it may even be worth buying the carrying case if you're spending $2,000 on the device to begin with. It also does not have CW and PW capabilities. I'm not sure if that's gonna be added some point in future versions. So that does somewhat limit your ability to evaluate, for example, valvular disease. But again, I would say in the grand scheme of things, it's not a major limitation. And finally, the image quality, although is pretty good for what it is, it's not as good as the full-fledged machines. So it's not gonna replace getting a full echocardiogram or a full vascular study uh, or a full ultrasound study. It's again, gonna serve more as an extension of your physical examination. Now you can bill for these exams, uh, again, limited echoes, for example, and other POCUS exams, as long as you have the data saved. Um, so these are billable ultrasounds that you will do, which does help to validate the cost for a practice or an institution. So in conclusion, I do think if you're able to cough up the $2,000, this is a very useful device. Um, maybe in the future, the cost will come down. I'm hoping that, so it'll be accessible to more people. It is compatible with iPads, which is nice because the image is much larger. And finally, it is compatible with the Android device. The first generation was only iPhone compatible, but if you're an Android person, you are able to get an Android compatible device. So again, hopefully this was helpful for you guys out there. Uh, please leave a comment, share the video with anybody who's thinking about getting it. And hopefully this gives you some sense of whether it'll be useful for your practice. Thanks for again for stopping by and I'll see you next time.